It's articles like these that make me think of the quote, it is better to have people think you are a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I'm here once again with another false narrative about the fandom menace, this time from the WashingtonPost.com, with an article entitled, The latest Star Wars film satisfies the right wing, that's laughable, will the left star trolling? This is by Bethany Lachina, and it's the same talking points, same broken record narrative, just new year at this point in the juncture. But let's get into this article, and I say that very, very loosely, shall we? Okay. Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker leaves theaters soon. Critical reception was mid-length, to say the least. Box office receipts collapsed, to say the least, ending below those of The Last Jedi, $300 plus million below The Last Jedi, and Rogue One, a standalone Star Wars film from 2016, $500 million shy of that. It couldn't even best a standalone Star Wars film. How sad is that? But right-wing trolling, yes. The Phantom Menace is made up of nothing more than alt-right trolls. Of the film was mild compared to the backlash against TLJ. This latest movie avoided that ire by moving Star Wars politically right. Again, that is so laughable, it is just insane. No way in hell Lucasfilm did that. And then I'm just spitballing here, but my guess would be that maybe the two plus years of being called sexist, racist, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, what have you, just generated enough apathy to the point that not only did we not care enough to see the new film, but we did not care enough to get angry at this point. All we said was, my wallet is shut, I'm going to go spend the money on Star Wars I love, such as Lucas-era Star Wars, such as the Expanded Universe Star Wars that became Legends under Disney. That's all that happened. The apathy was so great, we didn't even care enough to get angry. It wasn't because Star Wars moved politically right. There's no way in hell Lucasfilm would do that, especially not under Kathleen Kennedy and Robert Iger. So has Lucasfilm replaced its right-wing troll problem with a left-wing one? Probably not. Compared to the previous film, The Rise of Skywalker slighted fans with less visibility in fandom media and fewer ways to monetize their criticisms, whatever the hell that means. After The Last Jedi, an online campaign took issue with the film's feminism, leftism, and diverse casting. You haven't seen any of the first six films, have you? This right-wing critique was so durable that it has a nickname, The Fandom Menace, which even Lucasfilm uses. Again, we're nothing more than alt-right trolls in The Fandom Menace. Not, never mind that we are across the political spectrum, from left-wing to lean-left to center to lean-right to right-wing. We come from all walks of life, we come from all races, genders, religious backgrounds, you name it. We are probably one of the most diverse fandoms out there. Are we perfect? No. But we're diverse, we respect each other's opinions, and that's what a fandom does. Oh. This is so eye roll inducing, it is not even funny. Anger at The Last Jedi became a business. Popular anti-Last Jedi videos on YouTube have millions of hits. Maybe it's because people agree with it. Did you ever think about that? Translating to tens of thousands of dollars for their creators. Who cares? Right-wing personalities sell fandom men as apparel. They're not all right-wing. If you did your due diligence, you would fucking know that. Entrepreneurs raised 50000 in seed money for an anti-TLJ comic book. And almost 10000 in for a multi-volume history of the fandom menace. Again, maybe it's because people cared about it. It had nothing to do with politics. Or maybe, I, again, spitballing here, it's just that we don't want politics in our escapism. We don't want to be beaten over the head with current day politics in the, what's supposed to be a galaxy far, far away. Did you ever think about that, Bethany? All right, what is, who is this film for? Sure as hell not Star Wars fans. Many observers see The Rise of Skywalker as an apology to TLJ haters. Of the 53 The Rise of Skywalker reviews by top critics, quote unquote, are archived on Rotten Tomatoes as of January 15th, 44 described the movie as a reversal intended to win over the fans of the disliked TLJ. The Rise of Skywalker invites the perception that it is made with conservative white male audiences in mind. Fuck you, Bethany. After suggesting that there would be a same-sex relationship in The Rise of Skywalker, filmmakers included two women kissing in the background of a scene. Okay, uh, that's not exactly promoting a same-sex relationship because the women were in the background, and two, it was cut from the Chinese box office release. Did you ever stop to wonder why that is, Bethany? 
A moment easily censored for overseas markets. The Rise of Skywalker nearly eliminates the character Rose Tico, played by Asian-American actress Kelly Marie Tran, who was the focal point for right-wing hate after her large role in The Last Jedi. No. It had nothing to do with that. And I would like to see your proof, because guaranteed you're coming from the whole narrative that she was driven off of social media by TLJ haters. Without proof. Solely based on the rumor. But you're going with that. I see that right here. One critic illustrated all this with a list of the Rise of Skywalker moments that undermine TLJ's commitment to diversity. For example, the Rise of Skywalker explains that a certain feats by women in TLJ were only possible because of help from men or sheer luck. I haven't seen the movie, so anybody who's seen it, maybe can they, you can elaborate in the comments, but... I have no words. Despite all this, a left-wing trolling campaign against The Rise of Skywalker is unlikely. Fandom, politics, and the nature of internet media will probably curb the anti-The Rise of Skywalker backlash. Maybe basically censoring our opinion. Again! The most visible Star Wars fan media is made by white men. Again, fuck you. For example, until 2018, the Star Wars website included links to fan podcasts, which I collected for past research. 38 of the 56 shows had male hosts. Only one had a person of color as a host. Okay, 56 shows that you collected. Did you bother to look at all the YouTube channels uh, that were critical of The Last Jedi? Some of these fan media outlets supported The Last Jedi backlash. For example, Rebel Force Radio, one of the oldest outlets, pivoted to cater to a right-wing audience. Same... False narrative bullshit. Fans who feel slighted by the rise of Skywalker's politics will not have a comparable platform. Female, non-white, and LGBTQ fans control fewer fan outlets. They also experience more online harassment, discouraging them from engaging with the larger fandom. I want to see your fucking proof, Bethany. Because I'm a woman. I am not entirely white. I have European... Uh, heritage, but I also have Middle Eastern heritage in me. And I know people in the Phantom Menace who align with the LGBTQ community. Did you stop to think about that? Less powerful groups of fans are also especially likely to practice transformative fandom. What the fuck does that mean? Creating new things rather than trying to control the direction of official Star Wars media. For example, fans disappointed with the Rise of Skywalker have already created Fix It art, clarity fund charity fundraisers, and memes celebrating The Last Jedi in favor of What the fuck? Okay, TLJ and right-wing media. Right-wing anti-The Last Jedi content was helped along by non-Star Wars media as well. Dismay with The Last Jedi was part of coverage of right-wing culture grievances in outlets such as The Federalist and National Review and by alt-right influencers including Ben Shapiro and Jack... Oh my god. Oh my god. Website specializing in right-wing pop culture. Okay. Ben Shapiro is not right-wing. He's libertarian. Website specializing in right-wing pop culture expanded their Star Wars coverage to capture anti-TLJ audiences. These platforms also helped right-wing Star Wars outlets grow as a new audience. There is no comparable left-wing media ecosystem where anti-Rise of Skywalker feeling can thrive and be monetized to the same extent. There are left-wing people in the fandom menace. They have their own channels. They have their own opinions. The Last Jedi backlash included extensive online trolling of Last Jedi defenders. By contrast, since the Rise of Skywalker, the major trolling incidents have targeted fans who were disappointed by the film. A Phantom Menace account manufactured a hoax claiming Raylos were sending death threats to the ri Rise. No, that's not a hoax. He took all the tweets. Those were tweets. Actual tweets. He didn't create them. They were threatening J.J. Abrams. They were sending death threats to the man simply because he made a film that they didn't agree with. I'm not even going to bother going to the definition of a Raylo. <sighs> Another troll used a temporary account, a sock puppet, to pro provoke one of the Rise of Skywalker's stars, John Boyega, into social media confrontation. 
Proof, please. Boyega made a series of attention-grabbing posts, a sexually explicit joke, the Rise of Skywalker spoilers, a swipe at Raylo, and a video of himself fighting internet detractors. Basically, these same people who were threatening the J.J. Uh, Abrams. These are the same people that John Boyega was engaging with. Not the Phantom Menace. Oh, the troll succeeded in creating a negative coverage of people disappointed with the Rise of Skywalker. I found 31 headlines on Google News about Boyega's fight with fans, 15 of them congratulating him for taking on the film's critics. No, they were congratulating him for not backing down to those people who were going after him personally. That's it. The incident also provoked a wave of retaliation. A study of almost 50,000 tweets related to this social media fight uncovered tens of thousands of threatening and abusive messages directed at Boyega's critics, especially Raylos. That matter to the f that matters to the future of Star Wars, even though neither Boyega nor Raylo is likely to be in future films. When I reviewed the tweets from that study, I observed that the word Raylo has a de facto secondary usage as a derogatory label for a female fan. No, it is not. Tweeters mocked women who questioned Boyega's other remarks by calling them Raylos. The fandom menace already uses Raylo as a generic epitaph. Even people in the Lucasfilm orbit slip in into complaining about Raylos to dismiss women's criticisms. Dislike for Raylo has become an all-purpose argument against women's participation in the fandom. I'm a woman. I fucking hate Raylo with a passion. Okay. The kind of trolling is not motivated by affection for The Rise of Skywalker, however, oh, probably quite many critics of the film. Outrage against the latest Star Wars has not matched the campaign against TLJ. Again, I'm just spitballing here, but maybe that's the apathy generated from the abuse we sustained for two years. Given the middling success of The Rise of Skywalker, it is possible that most viewers preferred TLJ, or it's possible that people did not care enough to go see the film. However, The Rise of Skywalker is perceived as a film that slighted less powerful fans in an effort to pre please conservative ones. That may be enough to hold backlash in check. Like I said earlier, it's better to have people think you're a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt, Bethany, and this article is proof of it. It is just narrative after narrative after bullshit talking point after bullshit talking point in this article. It is just mind-bogglingly... Mind Asinine. <sighs> so stupid. Not even out of January. Same damn talking points. And no way in hell is Lucasfilm moving in a conservative direction. I dare you to say that to Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy. I fucking dare you. But enough of that. Enough of that. I'm just getting upset by this article. I'm just frustrated as all hell. Uh... If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you think that I'm just being too hard on poor Bethany here? That I'm just reading too much into her article or I'm just being too tough on her? Or do you agree with me? Do you think enough is enough? Please, dear God. We're not... Just let us go through 2020 without another false narrative about the fandom menace or t TLJ detractors or Star Wars fans in general. So if you, if you like what you see, uh, sus subscribe if you want. Share this on social media if you desire. This is Mara Jade. I hate this article with a passion. And I'll catch you all on the dark side. Take care.